Hi there, my name is Toby Naji, and I'm from the VC of Coaching Academy. And today I want to talk to you about everything you know about marketing is wrong. I want to show you two simple strategies that will immediately increase your sales and profits. Now let's begin with the key to successful sales. First of all, you must understand the customer's psychology. There are three simple rules to this, and I want you to learn this, understand this clearly. The first thing is you must be able to enter the conversation taking place in the head of your prospects. The second thing to understand is the customer always wants the best deal. And third, you must be able to have insight to the customer's journey process. This is also known as the customer's buying process. But to begin with, does your business have a market dominant position? It's not just your unique selling proposition. It goes beyond that, a little bit more than that. It is the reason why prospects would come to your business. Otherwise, there is no reason to swap to your brand or business. For them, there might be too much perceived risks. And do you know your prospects hot buttons? Because customers only buy on needs and wants. You need to be able to understand that. So how are you addressing their needs and wants? It's better to try and address your prospects' wants as this engages their hot buttons in an emotional way. If you address your prospects' emotional hot buttons, they will be more inclined to not think too much about the purchase and will buy. So think about things like must-have brands like Dolce Gabbana or Apple. Of course, it's not easy to do, but if you are able to create your market dominant position, you will be able to outperform your competitors every single time. So the rule number one, entering the customer's head. You must be able to enter the conversation taking place in the head of your prospects. Or another way to look at it is be able to address the number one question on your prospect's mind at just the right time. The conversation taking place in every prospect's mind revolves around two major points. Firstly, there's a problem they have and they don't want, and there's a result they want but don't have. Rule number two, customers only shop on value. Customers always want the best deal. The real key to success in marketing is to offer more value than your competition. If your customer shops on price, then you have not demonstrated the unique value you can offer them. So then you force them to shop on price. In other words, you're same old, same old. Now as a customer, why would I want to change to your product or service? And why would I care about you in the first place? So why would I want to take the risk on switching brands if there is nothing in it for me as a customer? Furthermore, customers that just buy on price are not loyal. So then what do you do? What's a solution? Well, first of all, let's take a look at distinguishing between value and price. Most people confuse value and price. They think, okay, I've got the cheapest price. I'm getting the best value or the best deal. It's not necessarily the case. So let's map this out on a two by two matrix. Firstly, on the X axis, let's look at valuable. On the Y axis, let's look at unique. So firstly, you may be not valuable, and not unique. Certainly this is the worst place to be in as a business. Some things are unique but not valuable such as these new mouse traps or many other inventions. The third quadrant is valuable but not unique. So in other words you're a commodity and you're forced into price competition. Finally the fourth quadrant is, is where you want to be. You're unique and you're valuable. So when you're designing a business This is the area that you need to be in. Rule number three, the buyer's journey. You must be able to understand the buyer's journey. Why? Because getting anyone's attention is increasingly difficult these days. Consumers are becoming immune to traditional marketing messages and more and more noise is created, which is making consumers switch off and businesses are simply unable to shout any louder. 
So in your typical marketing messages, we might get 5,000 marketing messages per day. And in the US, two out of three households are on a do not call list. 86% of people skip TV ads. 44% never open their direct mail. And 90% of emails never opened. New strategies are required for grabbing attention, understanding the customer's plight, and creating a unique message that speaks to them personally is essential. Do you know your customer profile? So who is your customer anyway? What do you know about them? How have you identified them? So in other words, to move forward in this, you need to be able to develop a customer persona. So the customer persona must be so tangible that you can envisage them and be able to target them in a language that talks to their wants and needs so that they will be motivated to choose your business. It must be very specific so that you're able to gain insight into what makes them tick. Otherwise, you might be wasting your time and money trying to appeal to everyone. By modeling the mind of a person we are talking to, we're able to understand the way we can communicate with them and hence be in a position to be able to influence them to purchase our product or service. So when we put together a customer persona, here is an example, here is John. What we wanna do is try and get as much information about that persona, and you may have many personas, obviously you'll have different market segments, but what you need to do is map all those out. Maybe you have three or four personas. It might be John, it might be Jane, it might be Betty, it might be some other elderly people, it might be younger people, but you need to be able to put something together and you require the following information. So who, what, where, how, and why. Obviously you need to know the demographics, their age, gender, income, etc. The psychographics, so their personality type, their preferences, etc. Their behavior, so the similar likes and dislikes, sports, hobbies, etc. What do they do? What would they like to do? Where do they hang out? What do they read both online and offline? What do they search for online? How would they find you or buy from you? And how would they use your product? And what would they buy from you? And what would prevent them from buying from you? So the more detailed information we can get about our persona, the more we are able to target their thoughts and their needs and wants. So then let's look at the customer purchase decision funnel. And we also need to understand this, that it's a stage process. An example here, there's six stages in this. The firstly is awareness. So the customer needs to be aware about a particular brand. They need to have some interest. Then consideration. And then intent purchase. And then evaluation of that intent. And also find it comes down to the purchase. Now, 80% of all sales occur between the fifth and twelfth point of contact between the business and the prospect. Now, this has actually increased over time. For the buyer's journey, this is what it looks like. Now, there are future buyers, there are soon-to-buy buyers, there are also now buyers, which typically constitutes less than 5%. In a future buyer, they will look at the benefits of ownership. So in other words, why should I buy? And then what happens is we go to the objections to ownership. So why shouldn't I buy? So your logic mind dips in. And of course, once we're, we're wanting to buy, then we're looking at vendor selection. So who should I buy from? All along the way, your buyer is looking for information. So firstly, future buyers are driven by their emotions. So they're wanting something. And like I said earlier, what happens is there's a risk involved here. That's the logic mind coming in here. So the objections to ownership comes up. And of course, finally, they buy. So when making purchasing decisions, people instinctively want to make the best decision possible and not feel like they've got to second guess their buying decision. Now that happened to me when I was buying my brand new laptop. It took me over a week and a half to do research before I actually purchased the laptop. And why? Because I didn't want to second guess. I wanted to get the best value for my money. 
as a business owner, you have to figure out what's important to your prospects, so their hot buttons. Educate them as to what constitutes the best deal when it comes to buying what you sell, and then show them a quantifiable proof that you actually provide the best deal in terms of price and value. So what are you doing to outcompete your competitors? So we have a step-by-step -step program for innovating and marketing your business, which allows you to first be better than your competition, do better marketing than your competition, allows you to separate your business from your competition, and become the obvious choice for prospects to do business with. So here are the strategies we use with our clients to increase the sales and profits. There are eight strategies we work with. The first one is how to make advertising work for small business. The second one is how to create a revenue producing drip campaign. Third is how to stop discounting. Fourth is how to downsell your way. Fifth is how to upsell and cross sell. Sixth is how to expand your product and increase your revenue. Seventh is how to build your business fast using joint ventures. And eighth is how to cut costs and unnecessary expenses. Now in this presentation, we will only be focusing on the first two, right? In future presentations, we might go on to do the other strategies. But for now, let's look at the two most important things in, in a business. So strategy number one, how to make advertising work for your small business. So we have a marketing conversion equation and it's interrupt, engage, educate and offer. Interrupt is your headline, engage is your subheadline. Educate is the information you provide either verbally or in writing that presents evidence to your prospects that you and your product or service are superior in every way to your competition. And then of course you must have a compelling offer that is so irresistible your prospects can't turn it down. This is the backbone of your marketing campaign. So my question is, what message are you sending to your buyers? The reality is the internet is just another medium to screw up your marketing with bland messages and most often do nothing to facilitate your prospect's decision-making process. You need to have a great website. That means you better fix your strategic messaging or you're going to fail. So let's take a look at an example of a finance website, Gary Bussing. This is your typical website. You might come across thousands of these websites. My question is, what's the offer? What is enticing you for a call to action? Yes, there might be a contact Gary form that you fill in. There might be a range of phone numbers on there, or perhaps a little button asking you for an appointment. But where is the interruption? So let's take a look at an example of a doctor. Here we have a chiropractor. So what's the offer? What is enticing you for a call to action? All we're seeing is just a couple of phone numbers. So where is the interruption? Let's take a look at a client case study. Now this is from a child psychologist offering parenting advice and resources. His name is Dr. John Smith. So what is wrong with this website? What is enticing you for a call to action? Yes, he specializes in a range of things, but again, it doesn't appeal to the customer's emotional hot buttons. Now, unless you're actually in the buyer's mode, which is your 5%, you will not pick up the phone and do a free consultation. So where is the interruption? We did a website makeover for this doctor, and we looked at the emotional hot buttons of the parents. And the biggest thing to look at was the fact that parents had belligerent children. So our interrupt headline was, are you sick and tired of the yelling, screaming and belligerent attitude of your child? There's your interrupt. There's a problem a person has and they don't want. So they appeal to the emotional hot buttons. Secondly, we engage them. So there's a result they want but don't have. Now you can discover the secrets to controlling your child and instantly restore peace and quiet in your home. Thirdly, change around the video and actually change the script around, which I'll show you in a moment. So we're educating them. Fourth, it was the offer. 
and also look on the right hand side of the page we change the picture to something that taps into the emotional hot button of the client so here's the new doctor's video script and it read something like this as a parent are you struggling to gain control of your child's attitude and emotions is your child yelling and screaming at you while often displaying a belligerent and sometimes threatening tone that no matter what you do or try, you just can't seem to get under control. Hi, my name is Dr. John Smith, and I help parents like you every day learn the techniques that will solve these frustrating and destructive behavioral patterns once and for all. In fact, let me prove it to you. Enter your first name and email on the box to the right, and I'll send you a series of 60 second techniques that will immediately restore peace and quiet in your home. So before the redesign, this was the result, an average of 300 leads per month. So an average of 30 call to ask about the consultations, about 10%. An average of three consent to the consultation and all three become new patients, which typically represents about 1% conversion rate. After the redesign, they still got an average of 300 leads per month, but 60 people, which represents 20%, requested the offer and an average of six consent to the, to the consultation, and all six become new patients. So the average sale value is $800. It's an average of $2,400 per month increase, or an average of just under 29,000 increase in revenue. Here is another example of a moving company. And again, most moving companies just might put a picture of a truck and then they say, okay, this, this is what we do, deliver all over the world, Australia, but it doesn't engage the emotional hot buttons of the client. So here is how we were able to redesign it. Here is our head, interrupt headline. Last year, over 4,350 complaints and lawsuits were filed against moving companies in Dallas. There's your engage headline. There's your educate. And there's your offer. So do you think you can do this for your business? So we've used the same formula for different business. Daycare center. As a daycare center, what is the customer's emotional hot button? Well, as a parent, it would be how my child is getting treated. Are they just another number? Are they getting put in the corner and not looked after? So here is the headline we were able to come up with. Ever felt like your daycare treated your child like a number instead of a person? Engage, how to ensure your child gets personal, loving, caring, one-on-one -on -one attention at daycare. All right, same formula. Educate an offer. Every marketing piece should obtain a risk-lowering offer to encourage the prospects to take the next step, to build their confidence. That offer should generally be to receive additional information and further educate the prospect, build your case. Remember, the idea is to build confidence and trust and not to try and close the sale. And why is that? People just do not want to be sold to. And remember, here's a quote from Joe Pine, and he says, customers don't want a choice. They want what they want. Furthermore, if they do not know what they want, which may often be the case, it is then your role to educate them and make them understand that what you offer is the best choice. So here is your buyer's journey again. As we said earlier, the buyer is looking for information. So you as a business owner, you need to demonstrate that you can remove the risk and then also raise awareness. So your job is to educate them about who you are and what are the benefits of buying from you. At any given moment, the number of prospects who are ready to buy right now represents no more than 5% of all those who are ultimately going to buy what you sell. So then between 95 and 95% 95 of prospects are in the thinking about it mode. So most marketing only caters to the now buyers and does little to nothing to educate those who are just thinking about it right now, but who might buy later. The right offer allows you to capture a large percentage of all future buyers in addition to those looking to buy right now.
your offer gives the opportunity to provide additional educational information to the gathering information mode prospects. So you need to offer them something. Make it free and convenient to download. Here is an example for a wedding planner. This is the offer they were able to download. Five things every bride should know to avoid disaster on their wedding day. Now you as a wedding planner, this engage with emotional hot button. Perhaps you can offer an idea guide for your industry. Here is an example of a sunroom idea guide. Now we weren't trying to sell anything. What we try to do is give them an opportunity to educate them on the benefits of having a sunroom. So here is an example of what we did. Seven benefits of owning a sunroom. Another format of marketing material could be postcards. It doesn't have to necessarily have to be a website. Again, same formula. Interrupt. Right, there's a problem a person has and they don't want. Engage. And this is done in a cheeky way. So what we're saying is there's a result they want but don't have. Enjoy yours in your underwear. Educate and then offer. So your offer must capture valuable information about who these people are so that you can proactively market to them on an ongoing basis. This gives you an opportunity to create a permission-based e-marketing campaign using what we call a drip campaign. So this is our strategy number two. Because of the saturation of marketing messages these days, it does take multiple touch points before your prospect will buy what you sell, unless of course they are ready to buy. Today, it takes anywhere from 20 to sometimes more than 100 touch points before a prospect makes their buying decision. Now, our experience has shown that using our conversion equation, it reduces the touch points to somewhere between 5 to 12 points of contact. And most businesses do not follow up with their prospects at all. And this provides a huge window of opportunity for any business to position themselves as the dominant force in their industry. So looking at our example of the doctor, he was getting 300 leads from a one-month campaign, and there are 60 opt-ins for the free info offer. Out of that, he was able to get six clients. But more importantly, there was 54 qualified prospects that did not engage with his services yet. So then what do you do? You create a drip campaign. So a drip campaign automatically delivers a form of communication to customers or prospects on a predetermined and scheduled basis. You create a squeeze page, you create an offer for them, but do not try to close. Rather capture their email and name, offer them something of value in return, and educate them and build trust. This allows you to repeatedly market to them through a permission-based campaign. So a drip campaign creates a process to leverage those hard-earned sales leads into an effective marketing campaign that repeatedly targets those prospects to raise their awareness about your brand and, very importantly, build that trust and confidence in your product and service and educate them as to why you are better than your competitors until they are ready and confident enough to buy from you. So here's what a drip campaign can look like. So you have 54 prospects, so you have your drip campaigns nurturing them. Now let's assume that you get an additional two clients per month out of this drip campaign. So this is what the doctor's website looked like over the course of 12 months. And so first month two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So what happens is the figures accumulate monthly, and what we're seeing is this doctor was getting 156 new clients that would have never converted without it. The doctor was able to get 3,600 prospects from a 12-month campaign. At the end of the first year, the squeeze page generated an additional 72 clients in 12 months, whilst the drip campaign was able to get another 156 clients. By month 12 of year one, the doctor is generating 30 new patients every month. Now, is that a number this doctor can handle logistically? Or in this particular case, the doctor went out and opened up a second clinic 
and employed other doctors. So remember, this revenue increase isn't a one-time deal. This is revenue you will generate year after year after year, as long as you diligently execute these strategies. Furthermore, you have another six strategies to learn and use in our program. When you execute each of these strategies, you've just created a system for your business that would generate a consistent large number of leads, conversions and sales on an ongoing basis. This systemization of your business creates a self-sustaining model that runs on its own without you having to be there yourself. This is where you start to gain not only economic freedom, but also freedom of time. Now, if someone, for example, builds a website, once they deliver it to a customer, they have to go and find a new client. But when you execute all our ad strategies, you always have new orders in your pipeline, upsells, downsells, cross-sells taking place daily, additional affiliate products or services to offer your customers, higher pricing that your customers will willingly pay, JVs sending you revenue, and lower costs. So these are the five areas of we'll focus on. Now through our five-step profit formula, we'll look at more leads, more conversions, more transactions, higher prices, and more profits. So let me show you the results of what can be achieved using the strategies that we focus on. Here is our profit growth calculator. For example, let's say you have a business. Let's look at how many leads you might be generating over the year. Let's just use a round example, say 1,000 leads. And then out of those leads, what are you converting? So 25% example. So you're getting 250 customers. Then let's say you're getting 10 transactions per annum per customer. And let's say your prices are $100 per, per sale. That means you have a revenue of $250,000. And let's say your annual net profit is 25%. The bottom line is $62,500. Now, let's say what if we just increase the performance by 10%? Now we were getting not a thousand leads, but 1100 leads. Our conversions weren't 25%, but they were 27.5%. So now we're getting 302 customers. That's an extra 52 customers. What if we said, let's try and get 11 transactions per customer. And instead of $100, let's say it's $110 per transaction. That means now you have a revenue of over $365,000. And let's say we increased your profit margin from 25% to 27.5%. Now, that means you're earning over $100,000 bottom line. That's an increase of almost $38,000. So with just small increases, we were able to increase revenue, but we were also able to increase the profit by 61%. So then what will revenue look like if we get a 50% increase. Let's say we've gone to 1,500 leads per annum and 37.5% conversion rate. Now the customers have gone from 250 to 562. Let's say now we've gone from 10 transactions per annum per customer to 15 transactions per annum per customer. And we've gone from $100 per transaction to $150. Now our revenue has jumped from $250,000 to $1.264 million. So let's say we increased our profit margin to 37.5%. Now the bottom line is over $474,000. That's almost a $412,000 increase. So with a 50% increase, we were able to get a whopping 658% increase in profit by just carefully adjusting the metrics that matter. Now, of course, every business is going to be different. Some businesses are able to do more than 50% increase. 
but let's just keep the figures conservative. So you're able to see this? Are you ready to do this as an example for your business? Here's our link to our growth profit calculator, which you can do at any time for your own business. Are you ready to grow your sales? Do you think you can do this? If you are ready to grow your business and would like to work with our revolutionary business growth system and our experienced team that will guarantee your results, if you are willing to follow our system, then we would like to work with you. Contact us for a no obligation demonstration on how our system can work for your business. There are also many great free videos on our website. So if you want to access them, just click on the link shown in the description below. And remember, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel as we will be bringing many videos like this for your benefit. See you next time. Thank you.